Morning campers, I'm Frank Licari, host of On the Town in the Palm Beaches, and today we're waking up in the Glades. That's the scenic farming community of Bell Glades, South Bay, and Pahokee that make up the southeastern tip of Lake Okeechobee. With miles of beautiful waters, this place is a sportsman's paradise, boasting the best bass fishing in America and unparalleled access to the nation's seventh largest lake. We'll also go down on the farm to find out about one of the Glades' biggest assets, a soil so rich it's called black gold. Have you ever wanted to get up close with an alligator or catch a largemouth bass? You can take an airboat ride or try your hand at casting a line. And if you're into nature photography, you can get lost on the Lake Okeechobee Scenic Trail or take a look at some of the farms that help make the Glades one of the nation's winter vegetable capitals. I'm on the town's Frank Licari and today I'm heading outdoors to explore the Glades. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.com for more information. Well, at uh, Torrey Island Campground, you can not only park your RV and do some camping, you can also do some airboating. And I'm here with Captain Mike of Eagle Nest Airboat Tours. Now, Mike, I'm a uh, city boy, as you, uh, as you can probably tell. And you got to explain to me what we're going to be doing here on the water. What am I? What am I? What am I getting myself into? Here? Well, we're going for an airboat ride, and what we actually do is a nature tour. We stop the boats a lot of times to look at the birds and the flowers and and whatever wildlife we see. My background's in biology, so I'm very interested in that, and uh, uh, it's definitely more than a ride. Can we do it? Sure, let's, let's go. Do it. Awesome. I'm not going to hear a word you say. The alligators, you, you, this is a good place for them to be, and normally this little earthen levee here would be dry, but it's underwater now, but there's still plenty of gators in here. It's just a question of seeing them. So they're here. They're, they're under, here. They're under the water. And they're, well, whose house is this? Let me tell you. Is this your place? No. <laughs> this was built by the local airboat club, and there's been a tree house here for many years. The original tree house was in a big banyan tree that blew down in a hurricane many years ago, and this one was rebuilt in 10, 12 years now. And this is where a place I've painted quite a bit. I came out yesterday and started a painting. How far did you get in the tree, did oh, you? I've, I've got it here with me, but you want to see it? Yeah, I do. Well, That's fantastic. It's less than great, but it'd be all right. Oh, well, com compared to what I could do, very good. I I'm still drawing stick figures in boxes. Uh, you're, you're a regular Monet there. Wow. The flowers during the spring and summer months are a big part of this tour. Sure. Not many flowers bloom in the fall and winter, but this is one that uh, blooms starting in November. It's a wild marigold called a burr marigold, and the seeds germinated on this vegetation here, which is a floating vine, and See, it's, it too is not rooted in the soil, and uh, that, those flowers are just growing in this plant mass. I'm told in, in Asia, this plant is revered for many health benefits. They, Asian people make a, a, an infusion out of it and drink the tea, and it well, supposedly... Why don't we start that well, business? What I'm, are we doing? Also, you can go to GNC, I think, and buy that in capsule powdered for it. I think we got to, I think we got to, this is what you're going to do after you retire from airboating. We're going to pick all these plants and we're going to make some tea. Uh, I'll, I'll spend my time on my painting then. All right. Well, you can paint them first and then I'll pick them and I'll make some infusion. What do you do with this? You said it's, it's, it's no good for anything. It's no good, but it's, you Unless said it's you're manatee. Well, I'm not, I'm, well, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm not a manatee. So I, but, so there's no, there's no purpose for it. It's, well, I mean, it's just here. It's just here. And it grows so rapidly it can choke out your waterways. And wow. This is a water lily pond, fragrant white water lilies, and there are very few of them right now. There we go. So look at that, it comes right out of the water. Now what, what? The stem goes all the way down to the, to the roots, 
And the stem itself is very tubular, very porous, as most of these water plants are. You could actually drink a soda through it and snorkel with it. Can I, it, is, the, it, is it They have a very, very fragrant smell. They have a lemony smell. But this is what they do in the afternoon. Gotcha. So I, I, I could literally breathe out of this. Yeah, for sure. I can, can I pull it? Huh? For sure. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's all right if I take soup sure. here, right? All right. Great. Little souvenir from my airboat ride. I'm here with Steve Weeks. So your entire life is just this. I love this. Right? So today we're going to look at some birds. Good idea. Yes. What kind of birds am I finding out here? We're going to find migrants who have left their winter home going south to avoid the snow and the sleet. So or, pretty much like the people. The exactly. People They're here. snowbirds too. And, and like, the, like the snowbirds who come down here, do they fly slowly and get in like mess up traffic <laughs> and everything? Yeah, do, possible. Do they do that? <laughs> All right, so where am I seeing the birds? You're supposed to see them out here in the water, along the edge of the banks, uh, on the docks. Okay. And not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. They're taking a break. It's a little well, early for the snowbirds. They, they gotta wake yeah. up. Yeah. And so, what kind of bird would I find in a bush like that? Indigo bunting. Oh, sure. I was painted gonna, that's buntings. the one I was gonna say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're there. Uh, water birds. There should be lots of egrets, ibis. Wow. Uh, herons. We even got. There's our owl. It's not. That's yeah. But he's a little stiff. Why? Well, yeah. He, he, he didn't go. He's home. standoffish. <laughs> he doesn't really want to talk to us. Yeah. So you grew up here. Tell me how the area has changed. When I grew up here, it was a great place. Still is a great place to raise children. Everybody knows everybody, and people watch out for people. There's a bird, by the way. There's a bird. Yeah. Look at that. That's the common moorhen. The common moorhen? Common. Is, there an, is there an uncommon one? Well, there's a purple. Oh, there's a purple. That's there, uncommon. There's a gallinule, which yeah. is a family. You know so much. You're like a, like a live, handsome, bespeckled encyclopedia. <laughs> Being here all your life, if I were to move here, <laughs> where would be a place that I might want to stop? Well, you want to stop at the museum. At the museum, OK. Yeah, you don't want to see that. We are here at the Lawrence E. Will Museum of the Glades. Now, uh, so it has a button here to press for narration. Does that does that go right to you? Do you get no, like a little no, no, and then no. you just start talking? <laughs> no, no, oh, okay, no. Okay, okay. No. But once you once you push it, it doesn't stop. Okay, all right. So I can't push it because it'll compete with you. Is that a, is that a silt smoother voice? Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a much smoother voice. Okay, well I'd rather hear you. So, all right. So you built? Did you did you build this yourself? No, out of, out no, of balsa no. Wood? This was actually made in the 1970s. Okay. Because there were so many pioneering families still alive and first generation people, they could actually recreate what Bell Glade looked like about 1905 to about 1915. Is that the scale? Is that the? I don't know. Okay. No idea. That, that's probably I like 1970s. I, yeah. This is good. I, I feel. <laughs> you feel I was, tall? I do. I do. I feel like if I was in a, a town with these people, I, I feel like, all right, I don't normally feel like that. <laughs> I normally feel like I do when I'm standing next to you. One of the greatest assets that the Lawrence E. Will Museum has in its archives are the stories and the photographs from the 1928 hurricane. The hurricane was the deadliest hurricane until Hurricane Katrina and killed about 500 people in Okeechobee City. And it smashed into the communities of Pahokee, Canal Point, South Bay, and Belle Glade, and Lake Harbor, and just devastated the region. The Herbert Hoover Dyke was the answer to that. So they built the dike the whole way around the lake, and that kind of keeps the lake at bay. And then after World War II is when Sure King really took off. We are here in the heart of Belle Glade, in the middle of Wedgworth Farms, and I'm here with Keith Wedgworth. You're, you're the owner. I'm a, fourth I'm, I'm a fourth generation farmer. Our family owns it. I'm part of the family, yes. I, I have a confession to make. This is yes. the first time I've ever been on a farm, and I'm, uh, I'm thoroughly uh, amazed and impressed right now. <laughs> well, welcome to the farm. Thank you. My grandfather started the Sugarcane Growers Cooperative uh, back in the late 50s, early 60s. At that time, uh, we, we started growing cane and, and continuing to grow our cane operation here. And, and phased out all the uh, other vegetables back in the mid-70s. You've got a lot of land here. The EAA makes up about over 400,000 acres. Not bad. And we grow everything from sugarcane to rice to corn, lettuce, radishes. 
obviously today a little more technology available to you. With all the GPS technology from iPads and our trucks uh, to know exactly what this field did last year and what we hope to do in the future. Oh, well, that's nice too. And then the drivers can check their Facebook pages and stuff. It keeps the day moving it, it, forward. It breaks up your day a that's little bit. That's right. Yeah, that's nice. Now, uh, I uh, obviously have a crack team of researchers all across the country. Yes. So I've come with some figures that I want to throw at you. From what is grown in the glades alone, the sweet corn can feed 16.5 million people across the country? For a whole year. And on top of that, all sweet corn that you find in the grocery store east of the Mississippi or east of the Rockies come from here in Bell Glade. But not just that, Keith. Oh no, rice. You can feed 25 million people for a whole year? Yeah. And rice, that is correct. Already, you're responsible for like every side dish in the country. When like, you go to that part of the menu, it should just say Keith Wedgworth <laughs> instead of sides, right? You are responsible for the majority of the country when it comes to vegetables. Me and all the other farmers here in the Glade, we take great pride knowing that we're feeding America. Her soil is her fortune. For years, that's how locals have described Bell Glade and its rich, dark, and incredibly fertile soil known as black gold. Every spring, the city of Bell Glade welcomes residents and neighbors from South Bay and Pahokee for an end of harvest season celebration called the Black Gold Jubilee. There's a Main Street parade, a 5K run and walk at the Torrey Island campground, fabulous food, music, and fireworks to close out the show. And it happens every April in Bell Glade. The Glades is also home to the Muck Bowl, where rivals from Glades Central High School and Pahokee battle it out on the football field every November. Glades Central has won six state championships and has produced more National Football League players than any other county. It's easy to see why these students proudly bleed maroon and gold. Muck Bowl is, is like watching the Super Bowl. Many of these athletes have come and you know, worn this maroon and gold. Uh, from the early uh, 70s until now. Playing football at Glade Central was just like a dream come true. Ever since I was a kid, I used to come over here with my dad. And my dad used to always tell me, I want you to play for Glade Central when you grow up. And it means a lot. Many people around the world knows about uh, Raider football. Yeah, Glade, Glade Central, it's football, football, football. A lot of the pressure is on, no question about it, because uh, there's a lot of expectation on the program to go out and do well. Playing on this football field, and you make a play, everybody's going to remember you for making that one play. They're going to remember your name. they also going to remember that time when you mess up. Nothing's giving away to football. You got to work for it. All these kids are, are really striving in the classroom academically. On average, pretty much everybody up here have a 2.5 or better DPA. Everybody here been playing football since a younger age, so they know what it takes to be like a hard worker. They all say that you know football is the way out. That's just a little saying, but they do understand that education is the key. If wild experiences top your to-do list, you can head down the street to Loxahatchee and get up close and personal with lions, tigers, and more at Lion Country Safari. It's Florida's only drive through safari adventure with over a thousand animals. And get this, you can even camp at the park. The Western community is known for its rich farmlands and agricultural heritage, producing everything from beans and lettuces to the best sweet corn around. There's even a sweet corn fiesta held every spring at the South Florida Fairgrounds with corny events like competitive corn eating and corn shucking contests. While you're there, check out the Fairgrounds Yesteryear Village to see how the pioneers of Palm Beach County lived, worked, and played. And if you're looking for a true farm to table meal, head over to Loxahatchee's Swank Farms for a gourmet experience served down on the farm. You can walk off all that food on the walking trails at Loxahatchee Groves Park, or if horses are your thing, you can hit the park's equestrian trail for a ride. We are here at the Pahokee Marina, and I am here with Melissa McKinley, and you just became mayor of Palm Beach County? I did. Give me some of the flavor here. If you came to Pahokee, this would be where I would take you. 
the only part around all of Lake Okeechobee that has direct access to the lake. There's a lot of uh, what, farming communities here. Do you get into the farming? Do you, do you get out it. there into the soil? Do you? I have. Do you wear boots? Like, are they knee high? What do you? What do you? What do you? Oh get yeah, in? yeah, like the rubber boots. You get the rubber you boots. You know, when you're in the muck. Yeah, you, you just know, kind of get in there. You're, you're not. You're not farming in sand out here. You're farming in muck. A lot of the farms out here, certain times of the year, they'll open up their their farms and they'll do community events and where you can come and, and pick your own or you get tours of the farm. I was going to say, I can tour the farm, right? Bring me a family and they, what, they take you around in a little truck and... Yeah, depending on where you go. You give a lot of tours. Tell me a little bit about how people can take that tour and what, what you show people. I do farm tours on a semi-regular basis so that people that are spending four or five days in Palm Beach County and are tired of sitting by the poolside they could come out and do a farm tour. So there's, way, there's ways to do it. So uh, tell me a little bit of the variety of crops that you grow. Well, basically we're vegetable farmers that grow sugar cane. My dad grew up on a vegetable farm in Cleveland, Ohio. Next year will be 70 years growing wow. vegetables and also now growing sugar cane, green beans. Pretty much everything. Pretty much everything that we can grow. Where do you see farming in the near future? Well, one of the things that's, that's very important for the Glades is that we do sell more and more product directly to the grocery store. While all of this great Palm Beach produce feeds the nation, it also makes its way to the plates of some of the region's top restaurants, including the ultra ritzy Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach. We have nine restaurants here at the Breakers. They range from Asian to Italian to um, global tapas. Sourcing obviously locally has been important to you. And have you always had that mindset as a chef? Local stuff tastes better. Like for us, it's just a win-win. Sure. When the, when the product is just, it's fantastic. You're also growing right here. Uh, we have tomatoes, we have some peppers, we have some uh, blooming tarragon, we have oregano, rosemary. So it's a lot, a lot of the fresh herbs that we use throughout our restaurants. So, All right, give me, gonna... give me a couple signature dishes that you like are like, this is my, this is my thing. Our uh, mozzarella caprese salad that we have at our beach club. It looks like yeah. artwork. You know, you also mentioned when I put it down, the first thing that hit you was the basil. Oh, absolutely. It smelled baked. it right away. Now, uh, I'm just going to warn you that I'm a very honest person. Well, let's, let's bring it on and see, right. see where we All end right. up. Exactly. I don't want to disappoint you, <laughs> no. and I don't want to disappoint the, uh, the people out there. Mixed together. That doesn't even taste like um, like a tomato to mm. me that I'm used to eating. That's, um, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's really incredible, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. If you're living in this area, and you've got the glades, and you've got all these areas here that have these local farmers that you can source this from, why would you cook any, any, any other way? If it's available, if it's delicious, if it's you know, fresh and outstanding the way you know, mm. the product we get, you, know, you wouldn't want to use anything else. We will bring the farmers here. As a matter of fact, we had some of our farmers here to have That's lunch right. yeah. uh, oh, not, not too long ago because what it is is so they appreciate, they understand the level that we're trying to achieve. Another example of South Florida local produce being used at work here at the Avocado Grill in West Palm Beach. Having a restaurant in this area, how does that change sort of what you're able to offer people? You know, when I opened this restaurant with ordering furniture, when I was purchasing everything, I wanted to make sure that I use local companies. I wanted to make sure that I stay in the community and support the community. And I try to do the same thing when I'm purchasing food. So obviously people come here and, and looking for that local sourced type of food. You know, it's very tough in the summer when the local farms are not producing very much, or almost nothing. Right. So it takes the extra work. I feel like people have been very receptive to this. When I come to your restaurant, I'm in South Florida, I want local produce, I want to go to the best restaurant, I come to the avocado grill, I can only eat one dish. Maybe an appetizer and a main dish. What's the main dish? I will tell you what the people love the most. Tell me. Okay, it's uh, our, our octopus dish. Our uh, scallop dish is very popular. Our zucchini flowers are very popular, and that's local. Obviously, whatever you're doing, it's working. You're here three years. You're opening up another restaurant. You must be doing something right. We're at the Dolly Hand Cultural Arts Center at Palm Beach State College, Bell Glade. And when I come through these doors, Lee, what kind of, what kind of programming are you giving me? Because I'm a theater guy, so I'm very picky. We do all different kinds of programming. We like to offer a wide variety. So we do some dance, we do Broadway musicals, plays. All of the productions that are on our series that are open to the public, with the exception of our Christmas program, are all professional touring productions. Very nice. Now, do you ever, um, 
You ever attempted to get on stage? Do you do a little stage work yourself? I, I sing in the living room. Do you Christmas really? Tree. Do you look That's at the you. extent of what I do. How many shows a year do you typically do? In our in, in our main public yeah. series, mm -hmm. there are nine shows this year. Wow. We have six special events, and then we do an education series on weekday mornings where we bus students in from local schools. And we have 17 programs in that series this year. Wow. At 730 square miles, the Big O is the largest freshwater lake in Florida. The incredible concentration of largemouth bass draws anglers from around the world. You can find a fishing guide online, but first, make sure you get the proper license. I'm calling Fish Florida. I got an answer. Five is fishing licenses. Freshwater license, right? Got it. They're going to email me the license. So I'm ready to fish. Are we ready to get some shiners? Let's get some shiners. Just to let you know, Thomas, he has the best shiners. These shiners are super healthy, super strong. Keep them swimming, keep yeah. them strong, so that by the time we put them back in the lake, it's like they never left. That's right. And right? then they can right. trigger that reaction bite from the bass because they're so lively. How far are we going up? Uh, we're going to run out Boy Scout cut. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> How's that? That hat's going. Yeah. That hat's going. I'm not losing my hat. What, what are you doing now? I am going to deploy my power pole. Deploying the power pole. Yeah. <laughs> the power pole? How much you say? Power, power pole. Power pole. Power pole. Yeah. yeah. This is a setup. Yeah, um, got a uh, just a regular bait hook on there. Right. Lead weight. Lead weight. Lead weight. Bobber. And a bobber. Yeah, a little bobber stopper right yeah, there. Uh -huh. Keep the bobber from going all sure, the way up. You don't want it to get that bobber going too high. Too high. Yeah. Too high. All right. And hold this, uh, and I will set you up with a shiner. Do it. Now, did they ever jump out at you and say, no? Uh, that one about did, please yeah. Please don't, don't put me on the hook. They what have deeper voices than that. They, 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 do. Really, they don't seem like they have that deep of a voice. <laughs> they, they're, a, they're, 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 don't ever put me in. They're very tough. Sure. So, you want to have the, the shiner hanging about I say that's about two and a half feet from the end of the rod. Right. You're gonna grab that. Got you. Yep. With your Got finger. You that. Yeah. And you this is your bail. Back. Right. Bail the bail. Put the bail out. You're gonna open the bail. Right. Open that bail. This hand goes here. Mm. All right. And you just want to use the momentum. Yep. To throw it out there. That's it. And I stop it before it, before gets, it gets into the, the grass. Yeah. Usually a bass when it hits it takes it right under and goes with it. Now if it goes under, you want to close the close bail, the bail. lower the rod, okay. tighten up with the rod low. And when you feel the fish shake its head, then you, pull then you set the hook. Right. Let's hope we get a get a bite. There you oh, go. Wait, oh. drop, close it, yeah. point, tighten, hit. You got him. Oh, I got him. You got him. Keep your rod bent. You got him. Oh. Okeechobee bass, baby. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Frank caught me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you didn't know. You didn't um, know Frank's who I first was. bass. Well, I heard a rumor that there's a swing bridge around. That's I didn't the even swing bridge in the state of Florida. The oldest in Florida. I kind of would like to visit it and maybe uh, take a stab at, uh, you know. Okay. Drawing up the bridge. I'll, what do you think? I'll take you up there. All right, let's do it. You ready to go? I am. Well, when we open the bridge, we have to shut the gates on both sides so that the traffic doesn't come Sure, we don't want cars or trucks coming through while we're When we pull the gate down, the switch right here turns the lights red on both sides. All right. I've been around here long enough to see everything change, go back and change again. Well, my kids, I've lived through history. So you've got the keys to the kingdom. You have to unlock the, you have to unlock the tool. This is the turnstile here. Now, you put some weight again. Oh, sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize we were moving, Charlie. We we're moving. Now, how, how much has this changed over the years? The bridge was built in 1916. The original gears. The only thing they've done is steel floor and they put the concrete approaches to it. All right, now, if I want to bring it back, let's go backwards. And it'll stop, and then you just go back the other way. Okay. Who knew I was going to be doing hard labor today, Charlie? Just don't let it stop, but just, yep. just barely keep it moving. Yep. You, know, you don't have to push it. Just let it let it move itself. How's that? Yeah, that's it. We're going to pretend I know what I'm doing. I'm going to move this up. Put it. Boom. Move that over. Go, you took care of the bridge? <laughs> All right. You're in good hands. get some ice cream while they wait or something. Don't you think we should give them something? No. No. It's your world and they're living in it. Right. With the swing bridge finally up, campers can make their way to the Torrey Island campground, 
one of a handful of waterfront campgrounds in the state with over 300 spaces available that can accommodate even the biggest of RVs and motorhomes. People from the north come down during season and they utilize uh, RV park. Campers can actually put their boats right up against their own campsite. It's just a family environment. And great fishing. Absolutely. Great fishing. You can do bass fishing. You'll have an opportunity to ride in airboats. Uh, it's an experience that you'll never forget. The fishing's not the only thing they come for. The city's also got a heck of a golf course next door. We have a nine-hole putting green right off on site here. Watch out for the back nine. A lot of water and alligators on that part of it. <laughs> and out on the 109-mile Lake Okeechobee Scenic Trail, you can see miles of lake on one side and sugarcane fields on the other. You can really feel the peace and tranquility this place has to offer. There's abundant wildlife habitats. We've got a number of people that come to our area for ecotourism now. The Glades is a great place to visit, but don't take my word for it. What an adventure we've had here in the Glades, learning about the area's rich history from native tribes hundreds of years ago to a killer hurricane that reshaped Palm Beach County. Not to mention the Glades' role in farming and supplying fresh food to our entire nation. While all that was pretty cool, that airboat ride on Lake Okeechobee is going down as one of my favorite on-the-town experiences. Come check out the Glades for yourself, and be sure to join me the next time we go on the town in the Palm Beaches. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.com for more information.